welcome back to Buffalo Times. I'm Nancy Shade. We're here in the Golden Mean Studio Gallery with our new town manager, Opie Upson. And he's going to let us know how we can participate in our town and be good neighbors. <laughs> so what is this uh, communication you're doing with groups of people? I heard about it, but I don't know what it is. Could you tell us about it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Hardwick area neighbor to neighbor group, um, mainly Helen Beatty, uh, approached me and this kind of the beginning of this surrounded um, how we would have some public input on the ARPA funds, which is the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, the COVID relief. Um, so we started talking about um, community engagement and mm -hmm. I um, since day one um, on the job, I want to get as many, as much input <clears throat> from the community as possible. So I was like, well, let's have, you know, or H Helen's idea was, well, let's have some community gatherings. And I thought that was a great idea. So um, the neighbor to neighbor group had done quite a bit of work as far as kind of identifying different places in town to, to, um, to meet up or to gather. Um, of course, we have the Atkins Field Pavilion, which is a great resource. And that is great. Um, we kind of looked at some other places in town that would be a fun place to gather. And so we're, we're doing it. We had um, two uh, meetings of some um, local, um, lo the smaller groups within the bigger groups mm -hmm. to get together and to try to plan their individual gatherings a little better. Um, so we had two of those meetings. They went really well. Uh, we kind of fine-tuned our, you know, our message and what we wanted to um, get out of the community. And a lot, some folks made some really good, um, you know, had some good advice as to, like, maybe we just focus on just gathering, and from the gathering, the conversations we get out of the gathering. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't want to show up and talk at people for an hour and a half or I want to just you know visit with people and you know I'll there'll be a, a short you know introduction and I'll kind of introduce myself for people that don't know me but um, I just really wanted to and you know from those little gatherings we just really wanted to get people together it's been a long two years it's been a very long two years and and the uh, lack of communication yeah, and community is really, really important, especially in Hardwick. I think that our community is the greatest community around. Like, um, I've always thought that Hardwick was the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that that's the mission to just. Well, now that you're the hub, how do people know where the meetings are taking place? So there'll there'll be some those smaller groups. Um, there'll be some postcards that have recently been printed. Um, there's some flyers going around town, so you'll be contacted um, by one of those representatives from the group. Um, you might get a, you know, a hand-delivered postcard. You might find one in your windshield on your car in your driveway. Great. Um, but just keep an eye out, and um, hopefully, and there's really, you know, you can show up to any gathering. You're not, you know. We're not going to turn anybody away because you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Everybody's <laughs> welcome. It's Hardwick, so show up at one of the gatherings. But we tried to make them so they're close to like where you live, and you know some of the the issues around the area might be similar. But um, the message we're putting out is, you know, why what makes Hardwick a great place to live, and you know how how can we improve? You know, what 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 do you want to see? Um, what do you what do you have to offer as well? You know, this community the communities work well when people are engaged. You know, I like it when people come to the select board meetings. I like it when there's a little controversy because people, you know, with a little emotion, people, you know, you get, you know, what people are thinking, and some some people have great ideas and they're just, you know, afraid to come forward and say it. And I want to get out to those folks that you know, maybe not, maybe don't want to come to a meeting or they don't feel comfortable coming to a meeting, but just like, let's have a conversation and like make things better. 
you and know. some of the topics I've heard are the yellow barn, mm -hmm. uh, the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, what was the other one? We were talking about it earlier. Those are the, some of our projects. The projects. The yep. projects that, that are funded. Is this some, correct? Some of them are, I mean, the funding is uh, always, you know, a fun topic. But some of the projects are nearly fully funded. Some of them, um, you know, what we thought would be fully funded, the way the economy is going right now and the way kind of the supply chain and the way things cost, we've, we're coming up short with some of these projects. For instance, if you decide to do the Yellow Barn, instead of doing the architecture, new architecture, if you maintain the old building and put that back together, would that be a beginning and then as the funds come in they could add on to it or or with the sewer system um, what what they're doing with that that's really a big expense isn't it the wastewater treatment facility is a big expense and you know what i was thinking i was thinking if newport got the money back from those people that stole the money and dug the big hole there the eb5 <laughs> yeah the yeah. eb5 yeah. if they get that money back they could maybe do a big recycling plant up there of some sort yeah. and and have instead of having the big heap of green grass covering the what's underneath it mm -hmm. they could they could actually do a real recycling project for the state where the, the 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 different substances that the trash is made of mm -hmm. could be separated and made into other products i mean there's so many ideas that are flying around today um, and also people being able to understand and talk about how they can get their homes um, properly um, lighted with, with the electricity that they can get from the panels. And so there's just so many things that need to be understood, even computers and why we don't have, why we don't have the um, fiber coming up the hill mm -hmm. because I don't know about you but Consolidated keeps trying to fix it for us but finally <laughs> he said we need the fiber yeah and that's it yeah so it seems that we're being forced by banks by by the post office by by everything that's happening to have to have computers and have to have mm. telephones so it's, it's the way that everything goes today, if you want to participate as a small business or a large business. Mm -hmm. So, and who's, who's there to help people really understand when you buy an Apple phone or when you buy a computer, okay, now what? <laughs> How do I hook it up or what do I do oh, with this I, thing? Apple support. Apple support. <laughs> I every, don't know. <laughs> but everybody can't follow directions. Yeah. Sometimes people need somebody sitting next to them holding their hand. Right. And, and you know, we have meeting places and we, we'd have people that would probably come up with a lot of ideas at these community events that you're putting on. Yeah. I mean, the bridge, it seems that the military can build a bridge in five days or the bridge over River Kwai or mm -hmm. whatever. And yeah. why, it's not that expensive. It's just a little footbridge. Mm -hmm. So why does it have to be so expensive? And with a barn, they can easily just restore that. I, I restored this barn in... Uh, I don't know, six months. Yeah. And this came in pieces and lay out on the lawn mm. for the whole winter. So I don't know why people um, think everything has to be so expensive. Mm. Do you? That's a great question. I mean, why can't we start small and mm. grow mm -hmm. with, with this whole idea about the barn? Because look what happened to Larry Hamill. I mean, he rents, rents almost all those rooms out mm -hmm. in the inn, and it's beautiful. Right. What, we have, what would we have done without him? Right. It would have fallen apart. It's surely a great space. It's surely a great space. And that he has one room that's gorgeous. And um, for rent, he, he charges a reasonable rent. Mm -hmm. When you think about the insurance costs, the insurance companies are what take everything. And you pay, pay, pay. But if you don't have it, if you don't break your ankle or whatever, you just keep paying and they never give you credit if you miss a time. Mm. And so how many people, I mean, how many people have to use the insurance they're paying for 
every single month. <laughs> I don't know. And if people, and see, I'm so isolated, so I don't get to talk to people like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're talking to me right now, Nancy. I know. <laughs> so if, if I, I'm just saying we don't have to start out with a spectacular entrance. We could have a beautiful uh, um, mm -hmm. ar architecture with a barn that's already there and do the interior over and then rent out spaces for people that want to, the cheese company, you know, Cabot and mm -hmm. all these people that really want it. Yeah. Ice cream for the people walking on the path. When mm -hmm. will that be finished, the connection path? The LVRT is a state project. And what is LVRT? Mole Valley Rail Trail. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And thanks for asking, because I get mixed up with a lot of acronyms. <laughs> I really do. Um, that's going to be a game changer for the town of Hardwick and the area. Um, that is slated to be finished in November of 2022. So this construction season, um, there's they're working, I think it's 90, 93 or 98 miles of trail. Um, a lot wow. of it's the middle part. A lot of it's complete, Amazing. but they're, they're working over in the Swanton um, over on the western side of the state as well as on over here in the kingdom. Is that right? Yeah, so um, that should be... I think we'll probably see the full benefits of it by next summer, but, um, you know, parts of the trail will be snowmobile trail this winter, um, but it's, uh, that, like I said, that's going to be a, a fun, a fun uh, place to go and to recreate. It, it is really yeah. fun. And right. They're painting the uh, train station up there in Danville. Right, they're doing and a big... That's a project. Yep, they're doing a big project. Um, they got a state grant to do that. Um, and, you know, that's to go back to your question about um, projects and funding. And a lot of the projects that we have going on, the funding sources come in many different pla from many different places. So... Um, when, uh, the, say, the federal government or the state or a nonprofit funds a project, they want to see, they don't want to see like a half, something half built mm -hmm. and then you run out of funding and then t five years later you work on it again. They want to see the whole kit and caboodle, the whole project funded, and then you move forward and finish the project and have it be what it is. That's hard to do if you don't it have is, enough money. It is hard to do. And, you know, you know the term, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day kind of thing. But that's that's kind of the guarantee that people want when they're funding things. Um, one of the select board members, Elizabeth Dow, uh, told me early on in the, um, as I became town, you know, as I took the job, that Hardwick receives quite a bit of grant funds. Um, like a like a total of like, <clears throat> don't quote me on this, but close to nine. It, it takes about nine million dollars to run the town. Our a year. A year, and our budget is about three and change. So there's like six million dollars of grant funds that we rely on. Um, that fluctuates from year to year, but um, ultimately, like the taxpayers are. Um, you know, there's there's quite a bit of funds that don't come from the taxpayers in Hardwick. And those are the funds that everybody, you know, that's, those are the funds that we want to do all these projects with. But That's great. Yeah. Um, and I could be a little off on the numbers, but it's similar to that. Or it's close to that. Did I name all the projects or are there more in the well, making? Well, I mean, we have, we have grant funds to do a sidewalk project on Church Street um, to up you know, to widen the sidewalks in places and to resurface and rebuild the sidewalks. Um, we have grant funds to, that we, for a recreation um, grant for um, a pedet or, uh, bicyclists. So we, have, we got some kiosks and some bike racks that we'll be installing. Um, we have <clears throat> the pedestrian bridge, which um, I recently got, finally got the cost proposal from the new landscape architect yesterday, last night at about eight o'clock. Wonderful. Yeah, that's so, exciting. Yeah, yes. So we're yes. hoping to move forward to that project. Because um, that's good for parking over there too. Absolutely. And people can walk across and yeah, yep. do their business in town. Totally. And um, we have the Yellow Barn project, um, which is kind of not, it, that project is 
being managed by um, NEKDC, which is Northeast Kingdom Development Corporation. Oh. So it's, it's a town-owned property, but the project is being managed by somebody else. And the funds, the majority of the funds are coming through them. And the funding sources for that project are pretty wide-ranging. Um, I came into that uh, later on in the project. Um, so Eric Remick is kind of like the point person mm -hmm. on that project. He mm -hmm. knows a lot about it. He's been involved in that project since on the ground floor. And that's pretty big, isn't it? I mean, it's a, it's a large ambition project. ambition in the project is large. Yeah, there's, um, you know, Cabot um, would be part of the Yellow Barn building. There's Jasper Hill Farm, um, and then the Center for an Agricultural Economy. Oh, um, they're going to be there too. Yeah, they Great. well, that's the plan. And like those businesses, they're, they're major employers mm -hmm. in the area. And we want to help them as much as possible because Absolutely. we want to create jobs. We want to have people um, be employed mm -hmm. and ha live a happy life, right? Mm -hmm. And it's walking distance to right. town. Yeah, and the rail trail's right there. So, um, and then you go to the wastewater plant and we have, you know, an, a pretty, an aging infrastructure. It's, the technology is, is pretty simple. Um, they're aerated lagoon plants. Mm -hmm. And um, but they're they take up a large area in the town, and they're you know they're it needs constant care, and and we need to maintain the the lagoons and thing you know they fill up with solids, so it's just like normal maintenance stuff, and um, it's so just, they come in and take it take it out and take it up to Canada. They'll do they, they'll so. Um, this hopefully this spring we're going to clean out one of the lagoons, and what they, what happens is um, a, a, we'll hire a company to come in uh, with a centrifuge, and they will dewater the lagoons. We'll pump the clear water um, down to where the sludge layer is, mm -hmm. where it's kind of muddy, mm -hmm. and we'll um, they'll add a chemical, and they'll pull in the the sludge, the, the muddy water, and spin it and dewater it even more. Oh. So they'll make like a cake. And uh -huh. it's like the consistency of like, you know, if you were to go to the edge of a pond and take a scoop of mud it's, and squeeze it, that's the, it's a little drier than that, but mm -hmm. that's kind of the consistency that it would be. Right. So that, that'll... Um, I wonder if they make stay mat that way. Stay mat is, is rock crushed up rock. Yeah, but yeah. they don't have to do use water with that. They probably use water when they're crushing it to keep crushing the dust it. down. Yeah. Yeah, but no, it's you, you wouldn't want to put this on your driveway. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they do use it for fertilizer probably. Yeah, so um, the sludge is going to go to Englobe in St. Henry, Quebec. Um, there's a lot of regulations around biosolids. Um, because of the pathogen, you know, the lack of pathogen removal and the attraction, um, you know, there's viruses. Everything under the sun is in, is in, the you know, sludge. sludge. Um, and so they're going to take that up to Canada. It'll be trucked up to Canada and um, compost it. So they compost it. They, yeah. So that makes it sit for a long time. Yeah. So when you compost something, I'm, I'm definitely not a, uh, expert in composting, you know, that'd be Tom Gilbert's, uh, you know, from Black Dirt Farm. That, that's his yeah, area his, of expertise. He, we, we did an interview with yeah. him. It was really interesting. Yeah, but um, the the heat that you generate from compost kills the pathogens in the sludge. Oh. So they have, you know, that plus their biosolids regulations are a little different. They have a little bit more space, so there it will we're able to take it to Canada. Mm -hmm. Some of the sludge will truck to Casella in Coventry and what they do with it is they cap their landfill with it. Mm -hmm. So in areas where the landfill's, you know, full, you talked about the green grassy dome, that that's what they use for topsoil. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So but they can't take as much on a daily basis as we need to get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's that's costly too, with the price of fuel, the price of trucking and disposal. Um, it's no, nothing is cheap. No. Yeah. And what about this bell that they're putting at the high school that 
They used to traditionally ring whenever Hardwick would win, which was probably a lot because they're good sports people yeah. here. Um, what, I, have you heard about that bell lately that they're installing up at the high school? Yeah, I did hear something about it. I know there's a committee that's working on the bell project. It would be fun to know when that happens and yeah. be able to attend that. Yeah, I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to ring it for our playoff baseball game. Yeah. <laughs> Which are coming up. Well, they're coming up, yeah, aren't go they? Yeah, go Hazen Baseball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so the, I think that's great. Any any time a group of, a, you know, a community group gets together and has a mission, I support. You know, it's like you get together and a mission for the community. Like, let's make something better. It's like that's what that's what community is all about. And so. how do they access you? Do they just come to the office, or do they call you with the idea? And either or. Either or. Yeah, they can drop you're, in you're if I'm there. You're very available then. Yeah, if I'm there. Um, yeah. Or an email. Mm-hmm. Email's good. Yeah. What is your email? It's uh, david.upson. And that's U-P-S-O-N is in Nancy. Mm-hmm. People get the M and the, or yeah. the M and the N confused. So okay. david.upson at hardwickvt.gov, G-O-V. Good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, emails are good. Phone calls, fine. But... I'm, you know, I'm no different from anybody else in the community. I live here in Hardwick, and I want to see good things happen. So, do you have any particular favorite things you'd like to see happen? Favorite things I'd like to see. I'd like to see. Um, well, we're having a spring festival, so I'd like to see a good turnout for spring festival. Um, Kiwanis Sherry Lusher has done a ton of work with um, Modern Times Theater and some other um, community organizations to really like kick off Spring Festival because we didn't have it for a couple of years. And where will it be? On the um, field? Atkins Field. Atkins Field. Yep, and there'll be a parade next Saturday. Um, I don't know when, when is this production going to come out? Probably it will come out as soon as Kurt, Kurt can edit it. <laughs> so, uh, I'd like to see it Tuesday. Yeah, so oh, Tuesday. So I'd like to. I'm going to work on it all weekend. Oh, yeah. great. So, if, so hopefully you guys, people see this and um, get to the parade on Saturday and Atkins Field. There's going to be some vendors there. and it's So just, the parade is next weekend? Yeah, next weekend, the 28th. Oh. Yep. Um, there's a, small, there's a, a, a fun run before the parade and, um, and it's, you know. Where do they run? I'm not sure the route. That's the Recreation Committee, uh, Jason Boehner, and um, that crew. Mm -hmm. When they so. do that, do they have people not riding on the roads? How do they? For the run, we'll probably, you know, it's like no different than having runners or bikers on the road. I don't think we might have a, uh, an escort in the front, but it's not, we're not going to close the road mm -hmm. for that. Um, and there'll be a lot of side streets. And how many policemen do we have? Oh, um, I think we have around five or six right now. That's quite a few, isn't have, it? Yeah, there are you know, some part-timers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one in the academy. Um, and we have two full-time, three full-time police officers um, that are full-time, um, you know, that work more than 20 hours a week. And what about these wonderful people that do all the snow plowing and the, the road crew? taking the bumps out of the roads? Yeah, <laughs> I think they do a great job. How many are they? Um, there's five, six of them, and then a plan operator. So Pearly, Mike, Spencer, Todd, so that's five. Edward, six, um, Tom, seven, and Ken, eight. So about eight people. Eight pe or seven, sorry. That's amazing yeah. that yeah. they can do all this work with eight people. That's, yeah. they that's do, really good. Yeah, they're out. They work, you know, they're out on the weekends, plowing in the wintertime, 10 o'clock at night if they need to be. But, and the electric company and yep. our neighbor, Adam Holbrook, he, yeah. he does a lot of work with yeah. the trees if they fall down. Yeah, the power and very rarely goes out. It very rarely does. Yep. And when it goes out, it comes back on again surprisingly yep. fast this year. Yep, they do a good job. They do. So um, that's all under your jurisdiction. Is that correct? Or um, I mean, I am appointed by the select board. And the select board um, 
you know, runs the town operations. The electric department is um, run oversee the, the commissioners, the electric commissioners oversee the electric department and the um, select board appoints the commissioners. So, so what is your I don't do any management of Hardwick Electric. No. No. But what is, what is your job definition when somebody uh, hires a town manager? Right. What, what is the definition? You know? The, well, I, the way I see it is um, I get to go to work and work in my community every day and work with all of my, you know, all the people in the community. But no, it's really just to carry out the, you know, the financial business of the town on a daily basis. Um, and so, you know, financial management, project management, um, personnel management, just making sure that everything's running smoothly. And is there enough money in the, to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. But so. The, historically speaking, the town is very well managed. Um, and, you know, the, everybody... You know, some people complain about their taxes being high, but I, I think anytime you're taxed on anything, I would think it'd be, you know, high. Well, the, <laughs> you don't the, want to be taxed. No one wants to be taxed. <laughs> but the assessors, <laughs> are they going to come around this year? I don't know when they're going to do another. I think that's uh, two years from now. Another mm -hmm. big grand list appraisal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's 2025. So it's a couple of years out. Mm -hmm. Um, but the assessors, we, we just changed from the listers to the assessors of the new um, town charter. So um, that's a, a company that we hire. They oh, do it. It's new people. Um, it's the same outfit that's been doing it a while. Okay, but are they from out of town, the people? Is that yeah. what I understand? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They come in. They work for a lot of different towns in the Northeast Kingdom. Burke, I think, um, is one of them. Some of the other towns over there, maybe, I'm not sure, maybe Sutton and Wheelock, but I'm not entirely sure. I know, I think Walden, they do Walden, but mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do they, do they also do um, <clears throat> town permits, uh, people, no. if people need a permit? Like zoning? Zoning. No, we, we have a zoning administrator uh -huh. um, that you can make an appointment with. or Who is that? Uh, Kristen Leahy. Mm-hmm. Um, she does a great job. Oh, she's been doing it for a while, yep. hasn't she? She knows, she knows her stuff. Yeah. So if you have a question about, you know, putting up a shed or doing a subdivision or building a house, like you definitely want to go talk to Kristen because mm -hmm. she'll, she'll tell you what you need to do. And what about our Chamber of Commerce? For a while, um, Marie Roosevelt was, mm -hmm. she sort of started and really spearhead a lot of work that way. But I don't even know if we have a Chamber of Commerce. So uh, the the king or the what is it the heart of the kingdom, it was brought under the umbrella of the Northeast Kingdom Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the executive director is Darcy McCann. Oh, so there is a heart heart the, of the kingdom. There is. Okay. Um, we we are really the heart of it in the sense that and the gateway mm -hmm. to everything because you can get to St. Johnsbury, mm -hmm. Montpelier, mm -hmm. Stowe, mm -hmm. um, Jeffersonville, uh, Newport. Newport, yeah, um, Montpelier. Yeah, you said Montpelier. Yeah, I did. Yeah, all yeah. within f forty minutes. Yeah, that's why I say we're the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but don't tell anybody. No, don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay. No, there's there's the desire to have it grow, but there's also the desire to maintain this sense of not having to have a million stoplights around and. Mm -hmm. But because, you know, when you come up the hill uh, on Route 15 to go into town yeah. and there's strangers in front of you, you have to be really careful because they don't know that you can keep going yeah. either way yeah. when you're coming up into town toward the front seat. Yeah. I sat there one day and I watched and I thought, oh, people are having a little difficulty here, aren't they? Because they're strangers and the, uh, the license plates were, they just get there and they're not quite sure what to do. And so you yeah, have to be careful but when you're coming up there. The way I look at it is how many, okay, so here we can, let's, let me, let me try to explain my reasoning for the. Excellent. For That's the, what we're the, here for. We want you. The, so <laughs> in any other, what do you do? Well, I've seen how you drive because I, I used to <laughs> patrol on Route uh -oh. 2 in Danville. <laughs> 
Should I pulled I you. I, I pulled you over. Story? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. But wait, 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 hold on. Let me okay. let me go to the the thing. Um, so, if there's a stoplight, like a traffic light at an intersection, and you see the light turn to yellow, and what do you normally do? Um, I go. You go. You try to beat but the I light. Look, but I you look. Try, you try to beat the light, right? Well, I'm not trying to beat it. I oh, just don't. On. I tell you, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so usually I just think, uh-oh. And I, if I'm going too so fast, yeah. and if there's a car on my tail, yeah. I'll keep going. Right. So but you, I just kind of slow down. Slow down and proceed with caution, right? Oh, slow down and proceed with caution. I did the right thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. But most people, they speed up and try to get through the light, right? Uh-huh. So if you approach the light in town... And you see a yellow light, which is the light that you see. Oh, there is up. a yellow light. There. Well, it's the blinking yellow yeah. light. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what I would you? It was there. So what would you do? I'd slow down and go proceed with caution. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So when you see a red oh, light, oh, Opie. When you see a red light, I stop. You stop. Or a blinking red light, you okay. treat you treat that as a stop sign. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's what the, the light in the center of town is. You know, we overcomplicate driving. We do. That's if we just, pretty true. If we just paid attention to what the signs say and what the lights say and go back to your training in the 10th grade when you took driver's ed, I think we'd all get along on the road a lot better. Like, yes, that's well, good advice. One that gets me is tailgating. Oh, tailgating. Yeah. Because they're forcing you to go faster. Exactly. Because you want them to get off your butt. Yeah. What's funny is... So I usually pull over. What's funny is that's a that's a good uh, policy. That's a good policy, but um, you know what? Um, Somebody might be having a baby in the car. <laughs> I had that happen when I was a trooper. <laughs> my yeah. my sister was born in front of the art museum in Philadelphia, and the policeman, my father caught her, and the policeman um, was flabbergasted yeah, yeah. that this was happening. Nice. So that's what I always think. I thought maybe they're having a baby in the car somewhere. I better pull over, let them go by me. Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. usually little black funny cars though. Oh yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I I think that the yellow light is in town is that's people good, just overcomplicate it. Yeah. I, I think it's yeah. you're right. And that's the good way to think about it. Yeah. And the reason why you slow down and proceed with caution coming up the hill is because in the wintertime, if a tractor trailer had to stop on the hill, yeah, they would get stuck. They would get stuck. Yeah. There is a reason for all of this. It's well thought out. I don't know about if it's well thought out, but that intersection in town is um, common sense, the common sense approach to intersections. And when, when Opie was a, a state policeman, yeah. I was coming home from St. Johnsbury with Sandy, my husband, yeah. And uh, going up the hill, I passed the That's car. That's Dole, Dole Hill. Dole Hill. It was on coming into Diamond Hill. No Dole, no, Dole Hill in Danville is when, like, near Sugar Ridge. Well, it's quite a climb. Yeah. And uh, I remember when that road wasn't there, and there was Me this too. other little tiny road that was really hard to get up. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was going, uh, I had a brand new car. And it's a very good car, so it was, um, you don't know how fast you're going, really. And I passed this car, but I kept at the speed that I passed the car with. And I look in my rear view window, and there's a policeman. And I'm like, oh, and then the light was on. So I pulled over, and this, this man comes to the window with this big hat on. Guess you got a new car, didn't you, Nancy? Guess you didn't know how fast you were going, did you, Nancy? And I'm thinking, how does this policeman know my name, you know? And he takes off his hat, and I look at him, and I said, Opie! Yeah. <laughs> it was Opie. And I knew him when he was little. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. And um, I recognized the face. Yeah. I did. Once you took your hat did off. Did I write you a ticket? He didn't. Oh. <laughs> he was very kind. He let me know that... He understood that when you have a new car and it's quiet, yeah, and you don't know. Yeah. Real, I didn't even look at my right. odometer. Yeah, I, I, but I was going faster than I should have been. Yeah. So that was the story about Opie as a as a policeman. Yeah. And do you miss your job as being a state trooper? Yeah, some days. 
Do you? Yeah. It was quite a job, wasn't it? It was. It was a great job, and I. It's something I had to do, um, and I learned a lot about people and a lot about the way we should treat each other, um, and the way we shouldn't treat each other, mm -hmm. and the struggles that we put ourselves in individually and as a community. Mm -hmm. So it was a very rewarding time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to not be doing it right now and doing the town manager thing, mm -hmm. but there are definitely days where I miss it, mm -hmm. um, mainly the scuba training days because I was on the, the scuba team. Do you still do scuba? Oh, yeah. I love diving. So do you do it? That's my passion. So do people call you if there's an emergency and they need No, it? no, I don't do any more. You just do it because it's yeah. healthy to do and yeah, you love a, doing it. It's a, it's a hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Being underwater is very quiet. It's, that's one of the reasons why I like to do it. I remember the movie that I saw, a movie, it was the first time I heard anything about the future of plastics. Oh, yeah. Yep. And, and in, the boy was in the pool and where it was quiet. And yeah. He wanted to get away from the adults for a while. Yeah. And he just got in the pool. And when he came out of the pool, his uncle said to him, if you want to know what business you should go into, it's plastics. And mm. that, was, that was the beginning of plastic bags. Mm. And all of the... Yeah. Now, I, I don't know about you. I sort of miss my plastic bag because I used to use it to put my trash into mm -hmm. and carry it out to the bin mm -hmm. you know so now we just buy plastic bags or sometimes we have them but this um, this uh, trash situation that we have uh, and the the day that you know in May where we all go around with the green bags mm -hmm. now when we put them out on the road who comes and picks them up our town road people or the green up day bags yeah, yeah. The green up day bags the, the road crew does it they do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I thought they did, but yeah. I wasn't sure. And we like, took ours over to where the road crew is. Yeah, and the all like all metals recycling, they donate a dumpster for that day. Oh, good. Um, so they're yeah, great, that's, aren't they? Yeah, they're that awesome. That is quite an uh, it is, and it's awesome yeah. situation they have there. Yeah, they really help the community a lot. Totally. So, anyway, we have we have dog watchers and animal watchers, and don't we people that make sure that the animals are safe in the community yeah we have a dog warden a dog warden yeah. or animal control officer is that what they do yeah, they do all animals uh-huh yeah isn't that amazing i mean it's a good service isn't it yeah and what other services do you do you um have that the town offers uh um the water i mean i don't well, know yeah, if that's we, part of the there's town a, or well we have a, a well we have a water system water distribution system mm -hmm. for the village, um, collection system for the village, which is water and sewer. Mm -hmm. um, we have, you know, that's pretty much it for services other than road maintenance. Well, uh, didn't they have to put a new lid on one of the- The reservoir. Reservoir? Yeah, a roof. It, is that accomplished? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Good. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that a lot of the infrastructure that we have um, has been years, you know, since we've, main, you know, we, we've maintained it, but it's been years since we've replaced it and things get old and things, you know, break. And water is really important. Yeah, I would say so. So people have to pay for their water. They're metered, yep. They're metered. Yep. Hmm. I was talking to a farmer and they said that they will meter the water that they have to irrigate their plants with possibly in the future. It seems like Vermont is, we have so much water. I but don't know where the farmer, where was the farmer? In Greensboro. Oh, wow. Yeah. I shouldn't say his name. That's fine. You don't yeah. have to. But I don't know if they have water meters in Greensboro. And I know they have a water system, but I don't know how they're set up. Um, you know, there's out west. They're struggling with water right now. They are. And, um, you know, there, there's uh, one of my professors in college explained it to me. There's the, the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine. Was one of the, and that's for the east, uh -huh. east of the Mississippi. Yeah, he and made then, a lot of doctrines. And then, and then there's a, the Prior Appropriations Doctrine, mm -hmm. which is the west and how they have... Um, 
they appropriate water mm -hmm. so that you have quotas or whatever. But it's crazy, like Lake Powell, um, which is behind the Hoover Dam, mm -hmm. right? I think so. And that's what the book, um, you know, the Glen Canyon, the Glen Canyon Dam. That's what Wallace Stegner. I think he wrote a book on oh, that. Oh, but I didn't that's, know that. That's drying up. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, the Mulholland Dam is in California, mm -hmm. and when when Mulholland built it. Uh, the farmers were a little disgruntled, but mm. it, it worked out yeah. pretty well. Yeah, but I worry right about, now it's really... I worry about the West. First. Yeah, and you're right. We do have, in the East and the Northeast, we have a, a lot of water, which so is good. Do we have a lot of people coming from different states moving into Hardwick now? I think we've had a steady stream of folks moving into Hardwick over the years. Yeah. And they're fixing up the houses really nicely. Some of them, yeah. Yeah. The, they, they, they maintain and, and preserve a lot of the architecture. Some, some so, do, yeah. So it's, and there's so many people that are good carpenters around here. Mm -hmm. So that if people even do come into the community, they, they can easily hire people that are local. Yes, yes and no. I mean, there's, there's some carpenters, and, but the trades right now are really hard to find, like plumbers, electricians. Yeah, that is hard. That is the electrician hard. is yeah. the hardest, yeah. I think. Yeah, so I mean if I had a you know, a teenage kid that wanted to get into something I'd probably push him towards the trades right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, if no matter what, if you have if you know a trade, mm -hmm. if no matter what you can make a living. Totally. Yeah. And and so they they could go on to other things within the context of their trade. Sure. Yeah. And because the trades are always changing. You know, electricity is going to be really changing mm -hmm. uh, in the future. We were talking to somebody the other day who has a um, oh, Tesla car. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting. Um, he was driving 116 miles across Iowa. 116 and miles an hour? It. Yes. Yeah, that's too in the fast. Tesla at night. That's too fast. And the policeman stopped him. And they should. Guess what? Yes. He didn't give him a ticket. Wow. He was just so aghast that he had done that. And they communicated about it, and mm -hmm. they all went on their way, the wow. policeman and. Well, he, but he stopped him to slow him down, right? To slow him down because, so he I did, mean. He did the job. He did the job. Yep. But that is fast. I wouldn't even think a car could really maintain that kind of speed. I don't know if it's really necessary. But yeah. they, but they, they, the tire, the wheels are all separate motors on the wheels. Yeah. So that they're very good in snow. Mm. But we asked him, did you have trouble getting electricity along the way to fill the car? He said, no, mm -hmm. it wasn't a problem. And it, it goes so fast. Yeah. But it's very expensive cars. Yeah. So in the future, I don't know if they'll bring the prices down on these vehicles, but I guess that's what we're headed for in the future. And I guess they would be good here in Vermont. Maybe. Maybe secondhand Teslas will come in handy someday. Sure. <laughs> because <laughs> that would be affordable. Yeah. Maybe. You don't know. Nope. It's, it's all happening, and it's happening very fast because of the Internet. Mm -hmm. Things things are quick. Right. So. What do you see for Hardwick in the future? Just all really... Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Yeah. I think you're right. I yeah. think the kids that go to school are amazing. Mm -hmm. I really do. Right. And they like Hazen. You know, if I'm talking to them somewhere, I don't get a chance to talk to children very much. But if I get a chance to, I love to ask them, are you happy at your school? Yeah, I like our school. Mm -hmm. And they do. That's so good. On we go. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of make your own education, so you get what you want out of it. If you can learn to learn, you can learn anything. Yep. Right. And, yeah. and uh, No one's going to do it for you. Nobody is, but learning to learn is, is pretty hard sometimes. Yep. Because they, they don't stress the fact that that, that very fact, mm -hmm. that if, if you can learn to learn, you can learn to do anything. Right. And so learning is very the key to education, I think. I think it's the key to life. It is. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, if you want a good life, you have to put a lot into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a good way to look at it. 
And I remember when I hurt my knee when I was waitressing at Traps, um, and we worked from six until late at mm -hmm. night. Um, and and uh, it it was it was I decided I'd be the best dishwasher that I could possibly be, and it worked. You know, yeah. I got through the spring, I got into the summer, and I didn't have to wash the dishes anymore. But I but I really sort of grew to like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I decided. I washed dishes before. Uh, <laughs> At it for a job. Yeah. It was, it was kind of cool. You'd get the dishes in and you'd, you'd say, oh man, I got a big pile of dishes here to do. Piles and piles. And, and, oh, it keeps coming in. <laughs> and then you do the dishes and then eventually at, at a point of the night when things slowed down in the dining area and you'd look over and you're like, oh, I'm caught up on the dishes. Yeah. And it was so rewarding. Yeah. The I the made next, it. The next morning comes around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really is something, and yeah. uh, so enjoy your work, whatever it is, young totally. people. And yeah, and if, if it it's, changes too. Yeah, if it's something <laughs> you don't like to do, just you don't know that you're not going to like to do it unless you try it. That's right. So that's right. Yeah, well, I had a lot of jobs as I grew up working all kinds of jobs. And look where, where it took you. Yeah. So you understand everybody's perspective to a certain degree. Yeah, and, I try and, to. And the good parts and the hard parts yeah. and what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, the encouragement and the coaching that it takes to be a manager, um, it, it requires patience. Yeah, and you have to rely on your people and, and just give them the tools that, you know, give them what they need to do their job. Yeah. You know, and try not to be a jerk. Well, I'm really glad that you are a town manager. <laughs> well, thank you, Nancy. And a lot of people are. Mm, I mean, that's it's, good. it's really pretty remarkable mm. how how um, they gravitate to your to your office and your what you're doing. So I wish you all the best in the world here at it. And yeah. I, and I know you're going to succeed. At, well, thank you. With helping our town to become uh, what it's going to be. Well, I think. I appreciate that, and I think that the people in town will help the town to what it's going to be. There's a lot of good people here doing awesome things, and Amazing. I saw that right away when I got here. Yeah. I mean, I I live here, and I didn't really notice everything that was going on when I lived here because I worked out of town and I'd come home at night. But being here every day, doing the things that I'm doing, I'm seeing how much good is here mm -hmm. and has been here mm -hmm. and I just want to help bring that you know help more of that and you heard it here at Buffalo Times <laughs> and on we go and uh, when you see him on the street do a thumbs up <laughs> yeah or just say hello <laughs> or say hello yeah <laughs> or ask about different meetings or, that or are shake happening. your fist if that's what you need to do <laughs> yeah. yeah well I doubt that we'll work through it we'll work through it <laughs> Thank you very much for listening and we'll see you next time.